Across the world, rivers are running dry. What was once a distant warning has now become a major crisis. More than half of all river basins on Earth recorded abnormally low water levels. From the Americas to Asia, from Europe to Africa and Australia, iconic rivers are shrinking before our eyes. In this video, we'll dive into the causes and consequences of the world's drying rivers. We'll explore some of the most famous rivers that are disappearing and find out whether there's still a chance to turn the tide. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any upcoming episodes. We've noticed that many of our new viewers haven't subscribed yet. And to keep creating these videos, we'd really appreciate your support. Okay, now let's dive into the story of our drying rivers. Let's start with what causes the drying of the world's rivers. It's one of the clearest fingerprints of a warming planet. As global temperatures rise, more water evaporates from rivers, lakes and soils. And because warmer air can hold more moisture, rainfall patterns are becoming increasingly chaotic. Long, relentless droughts suddenly broken by violent storms. In many parts of the world, that natural rhythm of wet and dry seasons is shifting. Take South Asia, for example. The summer monsoon there has weakened because of a warmer Indian Ocean and rising air pollution, leaving the Ganges River struggling to refill each year. Scientists warn that this river is now facing its most severe drought in more than 1,300 years, largely caused by human-induced climate change. At the same time, the glaciers and snowfields that once fed this river and many others are melting at alarming speed. In 2022 alone, glaciers worldwide lost over 600 gigatons of water, the largest loss recorded in half a century. That meltwater decline is already affecting major rivers like the Indus and Colorado. And the pattern doesn't stop there. Extreme heat and prolonged droughts are pushing rivers to historic lows. The Amazon drought of 2023, the worst ever measured in some areas, was found to be 30 times more likely because of global warming. In China, record heat in 2022 dried entire stretches of the Yangtze River, cutting rainfall by 60% and forcing hydropower plants to shut down while cargo ships sat stranded on the riverbed. Even natural cycles like El Nino are now being amplified by global warming, turning dry spells into extreme droughts. In short, as the planet heats up, rivers are losing water faster than nature can bring it back. Yet climate alone cannot explain the crisis. Human activity has become an equally powerful force reshaping the world's rivers. Vast amount of water are extracted every day for agriculture, industry and cities, often faster than they can be replenished. The Colorado River in North America is a stark illustration. So much of its water is diverted for irrigation and urban use that it no longer reaches the sea. For 16 of the past 21 years, water consumption in the Colorado Basin has exceeded supply forcing heavy reliance on reservoirs such as Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which by 2022 had shrunk to just a quarter of their capacity. Similar stories echo across the globe. In Central Asia, the overuse of the Amu Darya and Sir Darya to irrigate vast cotton fields caused the near collapse of the Aral Sea, a haunting symbol of over-extraction. 
And in the Middle East, new dams and soaring water, demand in upstream nations, have reduced the flow of the Tigris and Euphrates, drying wetlands and fueling political tension downstream in Syria and Iraq. Even infrastructure designed to control water can worsen scarcity. Dams store and distribute water, but also disrupt the natural pulse that keeps rivers alive. Along the Mekong in Southeast Asia, dozens of mega dams have flattened the river's seasonal rhythm. Between 2019 and 2022, the Mekong fell to record lows. In some areas, people could walk across its parched bed. Fish stocks collapsed, fertile silt stopped reaching farms, and local communities began to warn. The more dams we build, the drier the river becomes. And another problem is deforestation. Forests act as natural water recyclers, releasing moisture that fuels local rainfall. But as vast tracts of the Amazon and Paraguay forests are cleared, this recycling system collapses. Less moisture returns to the atmosphere, the soil dries and rivers retreat. Scientists have found that deforestation in the Amazon is already reducing rainfall and worsening droughts in connected basins like the Paraná. Without forests and wetlands to hold water in the landscape, it runs off or evaporates quickly instead of feeding the slow, steady flow of rivers. In the end, the world's rivers are not only victims of climate change, but also of a broader imbalance. Human reshaping of the water cycle through overuse, dams and deforestation has disrupted nature's delicate balance, leaving once mighty rivers starving for life. So now that we've seen what's causing rivers to dry up, let's look at what happens next because the consequences reach far beyond the riverbanks. When rivers start to fade, the first thing we lose is fresh water. Billions of people rely on rivers for drinking, washing and sanitation. Yet around 3.6 billion already face severe water shortages every year. In northern Italy, during the drought of 2022, more than a hundred towns were forced to ration water as the Po River dropped to record lows. And once the water's gone, the fields begin to suffer. And besides the loss of fresh water, farms will suffer too. They keep crops alive and food on our tables. In Italy's Po Valley, which produces nearly half of the country's food, the river fell seven meters below normal, leaving fields cracked and harvest ruined. And across the Atlantic, the Amazon drought of 2023 devastated farmers, while South America's Paraná River ran too shallow for soy exports. And as the water disappears, fish do too, cutting off a vital source of protein and income for millions. So when agriculture collapses, it ripples through entire economies. And rivers don't just feed us, they move us. They carry fuel, grain and goods that keep the global economy running. But in 2022, ships on Germany's Rhine River could carry only a quarter of their usual loads. And in the United States, the mighty Mississippi River fell so low that barges ran aground, choking supply chains. Globally, drought-related losses that year were more than 60% higher than average. A stark reminder that when rivers slow, so does the world economy. And that slowdown doesn't just hit trade, it hits the very flow of energy itself. Because they power entire nations. In China's Sichuan province, the Yangtze's record low flow in 2022 caused blackouts and factory shutdowns, even at industrial giants like Toyota and Tesla. In South America, it was the same story along the Paraná River, where hydropower shortages pushed up energy prices and triggered widespread outages. Even France's nuclear plants were forced to scale back when the Rhône and Garonne became too warm and too shallow for cooling water. When the rivers weaken, the lights dim. And when the lights dim, 
nature itself begins to fade. So, drying rivers damage agriculture, the economy and even our power supply. But their biggest cost is ecological. Rivers are the arteries of life and when they fade, ecosystems collapse. During the Amazon drought of 2023, thousands of fish and over 150 rare pink river dolphins suffocated in overheated, oxygen-poor water. And in Australia's Darling River, a similar die-off in 2019 killed nearly a million fish. As riverbeds dry, wetlands and mangroves vanish. The same habitats that filter our water, store carbon and give countless species a home. And last but not least, for many communities, rivers are more than water. It's their identity. In Australia, Aboriginal elders spoke of heartbreak as sacred waterholes vanished. The rivers that sustained our culture for centuries are now gone. As the water retreats, farmers abandon their land, villages empty out and tensions rise. And along the Nile, shrinking flows are already straining relations between Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia. What was once a shared resource is now becoming a source of conflict. So we've seen how drying rivers impact people, economies and nature itself. And we've already looked at several examples from the most famous rivers. So let's take a quick journey around the world to see how far the crisis has spread. Let's start in North America, where rivers like the Colorado and the Rio Grande have become symbols of scarcity. Because both rivers now fail to reach the sea. Even the Mississippi, once unstoppable, hit record lows, stranding ships and stalling exports. In South America, the Amazon suffered its worst drought on record, while the Paraná River, as we discussed earlier, nearly shut down regional trade. From Brazil to Argentina, rainfall shortages and deforestation are reshaping entire landscapes. And across Europe, the Rhine, the Po and the Danube all fell to historic lows in 2022, revealing dry riverbeds and even centuries-old hunger stones. As we saw before, Europe's rivers, once symbols of abundance, are now warning signs of vulnerability. In Asia, the Ganges, Yangtze and Mekong tell a similar story. Weaker monsoons, melting glaciers and rising demand. Africa faces the same struggle, but with even higher stakes. The Nile, Niger and Zambezi are all under pressure where every drop can mean the difference between peace and conflict. And last but not least, in Australia, rivers like the Darling remind us how fragile water systems can be, but also how resilient they are when the floods return. Hotter air, less rain and more demand are draining the planet's lifelines. So can we still turn the tide or will some rivers simply disappear? Well, in some places, it's already happening, like the Colorado River, which no longer reaches the sea. And in Australia's Murray-Darling Basin, scientists call certain side streams functionally dead. If global warming continues, more rivers could follow. Studies indicate that in a world that is two degrees warmer, a drought in the Amazon that used to occur once every 50 years could happen roughly once every 13 years. That means rivers would have no time to recover and ecosystems would break down. And if key rainforests like the Amazon collapse, the rivers they feed could permanently lose their flow. But it's not just the climate, it's also us. Overuse and mismanagement can kill a river even without drought. The Aral Sea vanished when its feeder rivers were diverted for irrigation. And parts of the Indus River now run dry before reaching the delta. Every time we take more water than nature can replace, we push a river one step closer to disappearance. But there is still hope. Rivers are resilient when given a chance. In Kazakhstan, part of the Aral Sea has come back to life 
after a dam restored water flow. And in 2014, a controlled pulse flow briefly revived the Colorado Delta, bringing back birds and vegetation. These moments prove that recovery is possible if we act deliberately and soon. To make more examples like this possible, a number of things need to change. First, slowing climate change is essential. Cutting emissions and stabilizing temperatures keeps extreme droughts from multiplying. Every tenth of a degree we avoid helps rivers hold their flow a little longer. Second, smarter water management. Agriculture uses most of the world's fresh water, but efficient irrigation, like drip systems and precision sprinklers, can save vast amounts. And cities can help too. Fixing leaks, recycling treated water and capturing rain can all make a difference. Third, restoring nature's buffers. Forests, wetlands and floodplains act like sponges. They store water in wet seasons and release it slowly in dry times. Reforesting uplands in Ethiopia, reconnecting river branches in Bangladesh and protecting the Amazon rainforest all help rivers recover their rhythm. Next is working together across borders. Nearly 60% of the world's rivers flow through more than one country. That means cooperation is key, from data sharing and joint monitoring to fair water treaties that ensure everyone gets enough. For example, the Senegal River Commission, shared by four African nations, shows how shared rivers can unite rather than divide. And finally, innovation and adaptation. Desalination, stormwater harvesting and underground storage can relieve pressure on rivers. Switching to solar and wind energy also reduces the need for hydropower in drought years and drought-resistant crops can protect food systems when water runs low. If we stabilize the climate, use water smarter and let nature do its work, rivers can recover. But the clock is ticking. We can't afford to wait. The question isn't whether we can turn the tide. It's whether we will, before the source runs dry. Thanks for watching this explainer. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep creating videos like this one. Want to support us even more? You can join our channel for only £1.99 a month or send a super thanks to support this video directly. Did I miss anything in this video or do you have any question? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.